In this lesson, I am going to talk about absolute value inequalities. Suppose that the absolute value of an expression is less than 5. Recall that the absolute value of a number refers to its distance from 0. So therefore, if this is your number line, what would be the numbers whose distance from 0 is less than or equal to 5? Let's make that equal to 5. It would be these numbers. Would this be the only solution? No. You should also include the numbers here because its distance from 0 is also less than or equal to 5. So hence, to remove the absolute value sign for less than, you just sandwich the expression inside the absolute value sign by this number. So in general, if I have absolute value of star less than or equal to k, my assumption here is that k is positive. This means that star is sandwiched by k and negative k. What about if we turn this into greater than or equal to? So suppose I want absolute value of star is greater than or equal to 5. Where are the numbers whose distance from 0 is greater than 5? It would be these numbers here and these numbers. For this part, this means that star is greater than or equal to 5 or... For this part here, this means that star is less than or equal to negative 5. This is equivalent to the absolute value of star greater than or equal to 5. Now, in general, the absolute value of something is greater than or equal to k. How do we get rid of the absolute value sign? You copy it without the absolute value sign and then or, and then switch this to greater than or equal to becomes less than or equal to and k becomes negative k. Of course, here my assumption is still k is greater than 0. You will see later that if k is a negative number, then the solution to your absolute value inequality is either the set of all real numbers or there are no solutions at all. Here is a summary of what I have just discussed. I just want to show you what will happen. Suppose we have the absolute value of star is less than negative 2. Your k here is now negative. Is this possible? No. You have no solution here because the absolute value of a number is always positive or zero. Hence, it cannot be less than a negative number. But what about if you have the absolute value of star is greater than or equal to negative 2? This time around, you have greater than or equal to. Since the absolute value of a number is positive or zero, then this means that all real numbers. Star can be any real number. Is that clear? So that's why I did not even consider the case when k is negative. So here are the steps to solve absolute value inequalities. But remember that the goal in solving absolute value inequalities is to remove the absolute value sign. And how do we remove the absolute value sign? The first step is to isolate the term involving absolute value sign on one side of the inequality. And once you have done that, use the properties of inequalities that we just discussed to remove the absolute value sign. So here is an example. You have two times the absolute value of 3x plus 5 minus 8 is greater than 0. You want to isolate this term involving absolute value of 3x plus 5. So let's have 2, 3x plus 5, greater than 8, and divide both sides by 2. So we have the absolute value of 3x plus 5, is greater than 4. So now we are of this form, absolute value of star is greater than k, correct? And how do you get rid of the absolute value sign? Copy 
that's greater than. So you copy and then or and then switch less than negative k. So this is what we are going to use to solve this problem. Hence, this becomes 3x plus 5 is greater than 4 or 3x plus 5 is less than negative 4. So let us solve here. 3x is greater than 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Divide both sides by 3. So x is greater than negative 1 third. Here, 3x is less than negative 4 minus 5. So that's negative 9. Divide both sides by 3. x is less than negative 3. Then you have or. If we graph this, we have x is greater than negative one-third or x is less than negative three. In interval notation, what is this? This is negative infinity, negative three. If it's or class, remember that it's always union. Then negative one-third up to infinity. For this next example, you have 2 over the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 1. How are we going to solve it? Now, this is the first case wherein we have a variable in your denominator and you're dealing with an inequality. But remember that the absolute value of a number is always greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, I can multiply both sides by the absolute value of x minus 3. Again, I can do that because this is positive. But of course, our assumption here is that x minus 3 should not be equal to 0. Or, x is not equal to 3 because it would make the denominator 0. So hence, we can simplify this as... 2 is less than the absolute value of x minus 3. Let me just write it in this way. x minus 3 is greater than 2. So therefore, how do we remove the absolute value sign? We have x minus 3 greater than 2. Copy and then copy without the absolute value sign and then switch this to less than negative 2. So we have x is greater than 2 plus 3 is 5. Here, x is less than negative 2 plus 3, which is equal to 1. And then, it's always joined by or. How does this look like? This is 1. This is 5. x is less than 1. Or, x is greater than 5. In interval notation, that is negative infinity to 1. And this one here is 5 to infinity and or always means union. Don't forget, you should always check this condition. In this solution, is x not equal to 3? Yes. 3 is here, so therefore we, will, we were able to avoid it. For our next example, we have here the absolute value of 3x minus 5 is greater than negative x. Notice here that the expression without their absolute value sign is no longer a constant. It already involves a variable. If this is the case, we separate it into two cases. Notice that it is of this form. The absolute value of star is greater than k. However, we separate it into two cases. For the first case, the expression outside your absolute value sign is greater than or equal to zero. For the second case, it's going to be negative. Why is that? For the second case, take note that what is the solution for this one? If the absolute value of a number is greater than a negative number, what is the solution there? The expression inside your absolute value sign can be any real number, correct? Whereas for this one, you have your restrictions. This is greater than k or 
it's less than negative k. I will start with the second case because this one has an easier solution. If I plug this in, I have 3x minus 5 is greater than negative x. In this case, our assumption is that negative x is less than 0 because of this one. You can write this as x is greater than 0. How do we get rid of the absolute value sign? This means that the expression inside your absolute value sign is just any real number. Equivalently, this means that x can be any real number. What will we do? We will get the intersection of this one and this one. What is the intersection of those two sets? The answer is x is greater than 0. Correct? We will now proceed with our first case. Again, let me just plug this in. Our assumption here is that negative x is greater than or equal to 0. Equivalently, x is less than or equal to 0. Let's now get rid of this absolute value sign. We have 3x minus 5 greater than negative x or 3x minus 5 is less than the negative of negative x, which is positive x. Let us solve for x here. I have 4x. 3x plus x is 4x greater than 5. Divide both sides by 4, so we get that x is greater than 5 fourths. Or, here, 3x minus x, so we get 2x is less than 5. Divide both sides by 2, we get that x is less than 5 halves. What do we do with these two intervals here? This is connected by OR. So that means we have to get the union. Let's graph it to find the union. For the first one, x is greater than 5 fourths. So it's this set. For the second set, x is less than 5 halves. So it's this set. 5 halves is bigger than 5 fourths. When you combine these two sets, because you're getting the union, when you combine, that is just a set of real numbers. Do not forget to take the intersection of this set with your condition here, that x is less than or equal to 0. What is the intersection of x less than or equal to 0 and x being a real number? The answer is x should be less than or equal to 0. So going back to our cases here, we obtained here that x should be less than or equal to 0. What do we now do with the two solutions that we obtained here? We now get the union. What is the union of x less than or equal to 0 and x greater than 0? When you combine that, that is just the set of all real numbers. Let's have another example. Again, I separate this into two cases, one for k greater than or equal to 0 and k less than 0. For this one, we have... 2x plus 1 greater than 4x minus 3 with the assumption that 4x minus 3 is less than 0. This would just mean that x is less than 3 fourths. If x is less than 3 fourths, then 2x plus 1 can be any real number. Equivalently, that means x is any real number. What do we do with this set and this set? Get the intersection. So what is our solution for this one? The answer is x is less than 3 fourths. Let's now go to the first case. We have 2x plus 1 greater than 
4x minus 3 with the assumption that 4x minus 3 this time is greater than or equal to 0. This means that x is greater than or equal to 3 fourths. This is just our condition here. Now let us proceed with removing the absolute value sign here. Copying and then for the second one, it's 2x plus 1 greater than becomes less than and then get the negative of 4x minus 3 which is 3 minus 4x. Let us solve. 2x minus 4x is negative 2x greater than negative 3 minus 1, negative 4. Let us divide both sides by negative 2. But since we divide it by a negative number, it becomes less than. The equality sign gets flipped. For this one, we have 2x plus 4x is 6x. It's less than 3 minus 1, which is 2. Divide both sides by 6, we get that x is less than 1 third. What do we do with these two sets? This is or, so therefore we get the union. For the first one, x is less than 2. It's this set. For the second set, it's x is less than 1 third. 1 third is here. When you combine these two sets, what is it going to be? It's going to be this pink set. X is less than 2. So for case 1, we have X is less than 2. But do not forget to get its intersection with your condition here. What is the intersection of? So we're going to get x is less than 2 and x is greater than or equal to 3 fourths. That can be written as x is greater than or equal to 3 fourths and x is less than 2. So this is our final answer for case 1. So going back to our summary, for case 1 we obtained this. x is greater than or equal to 3 fourths and x is less than 2, but for the second case, x is less than 3 fourths. What are we going to do again with these two sets? We are going to get their union. For case 1, we have 3 fourths and 2. This up to 2. For the second set, x is less than 3 fourths. If you now combine these two, what is it going to be? The answer is x is less than 2. That is the final answer.